Glad you could join me. I'm in the book of Exodus, chapter 15. Now, this particular passage is a uh, part of the story of the, uh, of the Exodus, of the parting of the Red Sea and all. It's the aftermath of that. You'll remember the, the marvelous story of deliverance that God gave to Israel and how he held back the Egyptian army until Israel had been able to pass through the, um, the Red Sea. And then the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire lifted and the Egyptian army was lured to follow after Israel to try to bring them back to continue as slaves. And in the midst of all of that, God caused their uh, chariot wheels to uh, swerve at um, the bottom of the sea. And as a result, the waters then came back over them as they were trying to escape. They recognized that the God of Israel was fighting for Israel. And so they they recognized in that process that uh, they were fighting a futile battle against the God who was all-powerful. On the, on the other side of the sea, after the waters had come back over, after everything had calmed down, after the danger of the Egyptian army was over, Moses sang a song, and he extolled the goodness of God and provided for all of his people. And in that particular song, it's very interesting that toward the very end, he, he explains to the people that, uh, that the nations around uh, were able to hear about this. It always, it always fascinates me because uh, here this event had just happened. And yet this particular uh, song of Moses that he sang just after that had um, uses the past tense for this. Listen to what it says. It says, The peoples have heard, they tremble, pangs have seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Now are the chiefs of Edom dismayed. Trembling seizes the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them because of the greatness of your arm. They are still as stones till your people, O Lord, pass by, till the people pass by whom you have purchased. Now, maybe this is a reference to the word that got out about all of the plagues, about uh, the, the ten plagues that happened. I, I'm not sure. It doesn't seem to address that. But it does seem to address all the mighty deliverance that God gave, culminating in the crossing of the Red Sea on dry land. <clears throat> this, particular, this particular idea is that the nations, the nations to which uh, or to whom Israel was going to be going, and the nations that would be uh, kicked out of the land of Palestine, the land flowing with milk and honey, the land God had given to Israel, those nations have heard. Now, I, I do believe that this probably is a reference to the, uh, to the whole of the deliverance, not just the parting of the Red Sea and the destruction of the Egyptian army. I do believe that it's a... It's the whole uh, deliverance together. But I also recognized that 40 years later, when Israel had wandered in the wilderness for all of those years, it was because of their unbelief, of course, that that happened. But they wandered in the wilderness for all of those years, and when they got to the land of Canaan, the fact was that the people remembered, the people of Canaan remembered what God had done 40 years before and the marvelous deliverance he had given to Israel. Now that's really significant. Rahab, one of the uh, residents of Jericho, remembered that. The, the people who were the Gibeonites, one of the tribes in that particular area, they, they remembered that. And these people acted upon the, 
uh, their faith that the God of Israel had given the land of Palestine to the nation of Israel. And so this is, this is something that, that God was doing in the midst of it. We sometimes get the idea that he was only focused upon what was going on between Israel and Egypt. Not the, not the case. The Hebrew people recognized that he was the one that had gone before them and he was, he was expressing himself and telling the people in all of the world who he was and what he was doing. And that's the case today also. We may not see that he is uh, at work, but Colossians chapter 1 tells us that the gospel is continually increasing and going forth. And we need to understand that that's what he intended through all of the marvelous works that he did for Israel in the plagues and in the destruction of the Egyptian army at the Red Sea. And so in the world that we live in, when we follow him, when we're faithful to him, though we can't necessarily see the results, know that he is making himself known to a lost and dying world. Father, we ask you to give us that confidence and that assurance. Help us even in the mundane, even in the seemingly obscure parts of our world to follow you faithfully knowing that you're the one who is making yourself known to all this world. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.